Hello, Icon fans! It's Shadow 33 bringing you the third tournament match for the beta tournament on Plus 17, 2011. This is Dark Vortex versus Shalka. Shalka is in the east playing Ciso, as you just saw, and Dark Vortex is in the west playing Grekim. So, Dark Vortex is going for. Oh, he's pausing, going for a start. So, is Shalka. Shalka has all of his RP set up. He actually. All but one of his RP set up. He probably meant to cue that in, but he didn't get a chance to. At any rate. There we go. It looks like he is fixing this up right now. Yes, he is. Okay, so there it is. So Shalka is getting six LCRPs, and Dark Vortex is going for well, standard start. Articus towards the front, and his triad set up right into the middle of his base. So both players are going for standard builds, standard economy builds. From the looks of it, it's hard to tell though. Dark Vortex has not actually started building yet. Once we see how the octos go, if they start building for RPs or start building for rushes, and it looks like four RPs on LC, so seven are total on LC. Shock, on the other hand, is going for, like I said before, six LC, seven LC now. This is about like two seconds up from Dark Vortex, so there's really no big difference. So it's basically the same time, and Shaka is also building an importer very quickly, which is also fairly standard. Of course, you want an importer in order to have the reserves to build pretty much any unit other than mechs for CISO. Dark Vortex, at the same time, is going to be building... Wow, he's actually got eight LCRPs. He has another Arctic coming in. Presumably both of these are going to be for rushing, or at least one of them is going to be for rushing scouting, and the other one's going to be for building more of his triad, completing the triad, but I really don't know because it looks like... It looks like they're intended to attack. There is an attack... Actually, no, there's an attack coming in from Shalka in the future. Shalka has actually sent an attack force in the future, just a small scouting marine, but it's still going to be distracting a bit for Dark Vortex... Or, sorry, what is he sending, actually? He is sending a small scouting marine, just not the one I was pointing at. So the scouting marine coming in is dealing some damage to the triad, but it won't be dealing that much damage ultimately. However, Dark Vortex did guess wrong with placement of his Articus. He probably should have placed it, well, really should have placed it just inside the base here. Because unfortunately, the, the marine coming in still is able to get through. However, the Octos, the Octos of Dark Vortex were able to get through that. So Dark, those Octos were in fact Octos for scout rushing. And so now Dark Vortex is going to be scouting Shalka, seeing what he's up to. And at the same time, he's building... Three QPRPs, he has three QPRPs that you just jump back about 10 seconds, but actually, no, it looks like you jump back about 30 seconds. But he does have eight LCRPs regardless. See how he's getting a lot of LC right now. This is just reviewing his battle with the Marine, and so it's not dealing a whole lot of damage to him. Shock, on the other hand, didn't deal a whole lot of damage either, but he didn't find out what it is that Dark Vortex is playing, so at least he knows what to prepare it for. He has a factory built up, two importers now. He's getting HHC as well, which is a very good idea, especially against Octos, but just against Grekham in general, because their main detector is SETI pods and those come in later. The far Faros are useful as well, not Faro Paws, just base Faros, but they aren't nearly as powerful, so they require a lot more support, and also can be a bit heavy in the Chrono Energy costs, because of course they're smaller units, you have to have more of them, and Chrono Energy is based on orders. Dark Vortex, on the other hand, about 10 seconds, or 15 seconds up from there, is going to be attacking very quickly the Octos, and dealing some damage to the base, but it looks like Shalka will probably be setting himself up to defend against that, However, Dark Vortex is also building up his Reef. He did move his Articus not much further back. No, he actually didn't move it at all. So his Reef is building. It's just building up right now, which is about... Actually, he jumped back about five seconds. But it is building, once again. And Shalka, back when... Oops. Shalka, back when we were, is actually building up... He's building up a bit more of his base towards the north, where the Octos aren't going. He's hiding away for the Octo with his Marines while getting an HHC down on the bottom to finish it off. So the HHC did manage to finish off that Octo. And same time, or five, actually 15 seconds down, Dark Vortex is double checking his attack, seeing what's going on, making sure that he isn't being kited too heavily, but it probably won't be that easy. He's probably just reviewing it, because it's not that serious of an attack, it's just an Echo Scout, or not only Echo Scout, but it's just a quick scout to die. All he really needs to know is what Shalka is playing and what Shalka is doing with that race. However, now that he knows what it is, or partially what he knows, he's going to be able to have some idea of how to counter it. However, he probably didn't see this north expansion, or north part of the base right here, and that's going to be a huge difference. He only sees the two importers in one factory. He might not be thinking about how much Shalka should have, but he probably is thinking, I wonder where Shalka's base is entirely, because still, that's not... I mean, two, two importers one factory at three minutes in the game is not totally unreasonable, but with seven, R, with seven RPs in LC and two on QP, that is still pretty low, so having another factory and another importer is what should be expected. However... This is about the same time that we're looking at for my commenting on the commenting on the base itself. Advanced Rushes is being upgraded for for Dark Vortex about 15 seconds down from Shalka. And Dark Vortex is also fast forwarding through passing Shalka right about now. And no, Shalka is also fast forwarding 
No, he's not. Shalka's going back to normal speed. So yeah, Star Project has passed Shalka, and he's building up himself a dome and a spire. And a spire, yes, there you are. Building himself a dome. So going for the correct turtle strategy we saw Kitan do in match one, and. I'm not sure how fighting it's going to be because the domes are not quite as tight in as they were for Kitan. They are more focused on the front of the base, so there's more room for harassment on the back of the base going around the domes. However, there's also the expansion down here, which is very open to harassment. So that's probably going to be a harassment target for Shalka. I wouldn't be surprised. Shalka, on the other hand, about 10 seconds down from here, is sending an HHC from the north, which, like I said before, would be the best place to harass from because, of course, an HHC from the north won't be countered from the domes that are facing east and expecting units directly from Shalka's base. So... Shaka's little strike force will be able to deal some harassment damage, but it won't be dealing too much unless he manages to undermine properly. And it doesn't look like it's too far into the past, so Dark Vortex should be able to counter this fairly effectively. He knows it's coming, he knows what's happened, so he's probably going to be able to counter it with some units of his own. And just double checking Dark Vortex coming in. Dark Vortex does not have... Yes, he sees the attack coming in right now, and it looks like he has a heavy bug coming in, so that will help the detect. Like I said, these are kind of the main detectors. They are a bit late game units, or mid game units, but really, okay, four minutes, okay, maybe not mid game, early mid game. ATT's coming in the front, doing nothing against the domes. Shock is likely to change that, I'm sure. Double checking what he's doing, 10 seconds down. It looks like he's slowed down to better micro these guys. His harassment is going in the future as well, and it looks like, or should it be going as normal as well, and it looks like the ATC's hitting the front of the base, maybe just a distraction, but of course. Dark Vortex is very well aware of the ATC harassing to the north. And I wouldn't be surprised that the Sepipod that Dark Vortex built is designed to hit that Sepipod to the north. And yes, it is. The Sepipod to the north is about a minute and a half up. Dark Vortex did use it to destroy the Sepipod up to the north. Marine to the south from Shaka is going to be able to destroy one of the RPs, but not the other one. So right now, Sh Shaka has a slightly weaker economic position. He's a minute and a half down, though. So it's slightly offset by that fact. However, I don't know if he's going to be expanding too much. He has 7 LC, 3 QP versus... Dark Vortex, a minute and a half up from him, having what was 9... It was 9 Q LC and 6 QP, but now it's 5 QP. So, it looks like Dark Vortex is in a slightly better position economically. It's hard to tell because of the time difference, but I can't... I don't see Shaka building up too much more in his economy, at least in his main base, and he does seem to have an expansion trying to get down here. He has 1 RP for on QP in the south middle, but otherwise he doesn't have too much. His harassment forces have changed around near the UPP. However, his harassment forces are actually, yes, doing a UPP delayed attack, and going to be dealing a lot of damage very heavily. So the RP right here is going to be doing is going to be killed very quickly. Lancer here is take care of any semi paws that come in. So that attack is going to be a lot harder to counter. That second attack changed around, and Dark Vortex is now harassing the base. Well, now harassing being a minute about three minutes up from what we we're looking near the UPP. So he's very near the present. Shaka is double checking to see what's going on, but he doesn't really have much to worry about because, of course, he has very strong forces coming in at the UPP, and the blue time move has come to. Make those forces come in, so the blue time wave coming in is going to be dealing a lot of damage. However, he needs to double check and actually get the attack pushed in further, right near the UPP as well, so that Dark Vortex can't counter it too easily. This is actually one of the things a lot of players like to do, a lot of good players like to do. However, it does look like Shalk, yes, Dark Vortex has gotten Chrono Porting, so Dark Vortex won't be quite as vulnerable to this as it may have looked. So, right now, he is not going to be able, this is right near the UPP border. And his Chrono Port, unfortunately, has been cancelled for him. He apparently got undermined right there by Shalka's attack. So, Shalka will be able to deal a lot of damage. However, these units coming in should be able... They did finish off, so yes, that finished off the HHDs coming in. So, Shalka's attack was mostly destroyed. But once this green time wave comes, we'll know for sure what exactly happened. And it looks like... Yes, the green time wave is showing it's stable. So, Shalka was not able to ultimately deal enough damage to make this useful. But, he was able to deal enough damage to at least give us a bit of a distraction to Dark Vortex. However, not an ultimately useful distraction. One of the HTC's coming up to harass, another Lancer coming in around back to harass, so most of the forces look like they just scattered rather than got killed. So this harassment should be decently effective, and it looks like it actually did manage to undermine Dark Vortex's chronoporting. However, he does ultimately get chronoporting, so it's not that useful. However, the Sepipod, actually, you know what? He has no resources. He really could be getting Sepipods and Farpods right now to help out with this, but he's primarily focused on base class units going for a straight attack, how mechs coming in from Shalka, on the other hand, will be able to take care of the very quickly. A lot of mechs coming in from Shalka, and he needs that LC sync, apparently, very heavily. He has ground units, he has no machinery, he's getting no advanced tech other than upgrading his mechs, so he's going for a very heavy mech attack, which is actually a very good idea. Grekham is very, very fond of air, and mechs are very, very good against air. So as a result, mechs are a great counter against Grekham. Just a small lesson. And... Of course, as we can see, Dark Vortex is about a minute up from there. He seems to be focusing on getting a units to Chronoport back to help himself out. And he is actually also going heavily for Octos, which 
If he goes heavily enough, or Octos or Octopods, that will be more effective against the the mechs, because the mechs aren't super effective against ground, they're more effective against air. However, he is going for Firepods and Sepipods, and I don't know how well this will pan out. Firepods and Sepipods are powerful units, but like I said, mechs are powerful against air, so this may not be the best idea. Two Mars coming in as well. Oh! Yes, Shaka can get Mars without machinery. So Shaka is focusing on Mars, mechs, and Marines to an extent. So he's a lot of Mars, a lot of mechs, and he is being very aggressive on this. And both players are getting very low in Chrono Energy as well. Dark Vortex is a bit more Chrono Energy to help him out. He has a Chrono Port as well to help out, but I don't know how much damage that will actually do, given that all the units coming in will be able to take care of it. It looks like he is setting his spot to help out harass the North Expansion that Shalka has taken. Shalka, on the other hand, is not too worried about these. Two minutes up from there, just getting his units down to harass and attack. Lots of Lancers, lots of mechs, lots of Mars, just very aggressive low-tech attack. While Dark and not even a Chrono either. And Dark Vortex jumping back, he sent out a Chrono Port in the UPP and hoping for the best with it, but I don't know exactly what's gonna do, because like I said before, that's a lot of mechs. Mostly the Mars are taking point though, so that might actually be effective. We'll be able to tell once the screen time wave comes in, but for now it looks like the Mars are the ones actually attacking directly. Shaka hasn't attacked with the mechs yet, but I'm imagining he's gonna be, like he normally does, sending the mechs out in the UPP or near the UPP border so that they're a lot harder to counter. However, the mechs really need to be positioned better, so I don't know if that's the best strategy, given that the mechs need to be there where they're needed. They don't just go and attack directly. They're, like I said, an anti-air unit. We see the tooltip right here. Yeah, 24 damage per 5 seconds versus ground, and so basically 4.8 damage per second versus ground, and 12.4 damage per second versus air. That's actually been upgraded slightly, so it's a bit higher than that. It's, but still, it's the point, point is, it's a lot more damaging versus air than versus ground. So mechs really need to be a good response force against air. Being a direct attack force, unless you know your opponent is going mass air, is not quite as useful. However, a good useful direct attack force is Lancers, because those ones, well, still not super effective against ground until aerospace is researched. They are still very effective units for harassment and getting around defenses of a base. So Shalka, as we can see, has taken very, very large map control. He's taken almost the entire map. Dark Vortex, on the other hand, has taken most of the map, or he has taken most of the map that he can. Taking the north, he's tried taking the south before, as we saw, but that wasn't very effective. So he is not going to be doing too hot against this. The mechs are coming in, trying to do what they can. It looks like they are gonna. The Mars are coming in, however, dealing a lot of damage to this, a lot of damage to the domes. Shalka is gonna be very hard to get past with this because the mechs, like I said, get rid of the air. The Mars is gonna get rid of any ground units, so he's a very good combo going in with his units. Really, I don't know what he can, what Dark Vortex can do besides a really clever Chrono Port attack. And I don't know if that's happening. He is trying to go for that, certainly. Getting, getting far past Sepipods to try to undermine the expansion up here, but at that point, there's already units. I mean, Shaka has had these units for several minutes. He's been very good about not being undermined. One of the advantages of attacking near the UPP border is that when your attack is scouted, the ability to undermine it is minimized because the actual... the resources you needed to build the units have already been used. They've already been mined. They are in the immutable pass, so they're very difficult to get rid of. So Shaka seems to be doing very well right now. I don't know what Dark Vertex can do. Let's see what Dark Vortex is trying to do. Dark Vortex appears to be trying to, once again, like get all the Chrono Ports in. Get Sippy Pods in to try to help out fighting against the Lancers. Also getting some Octos for what purpose, I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter. At the point he's out, he's ju jumped towards a minute into the future, about four minutes up from where we were looking. Jumping back four minutes, he sees that there's nothing really for him in the future. The green time of will carry his death. So he's got to be very careful about that. The Lancers are coming in. They've dealt a lot of damage, and Mars as well coming in dealing a lot of damage. Shalka, from his point of view, it's about five seconds up, so about the same time. His Mars are dealing a lot of damage. You can see his mechs coming in, just finishing off what he can find. He actually has a defense turret right here as well, a nice forward defense turret. Very cute. And a lot of mechs and Mars still in the base. He doesn't have the chrono energy to command them, even if he wanted to. But it doesn't really matter. Right now, he is completely dominating the base of Dark Vortex. Dark Vortex has been completely obliterated. His main has been obliterated. His north expansion will be falling very quickly. He, I'm not sure what Dark Vortex really like can do right now. He's jumped to the present, but he really doesn't have much. It looks like he might be trying to... He has Chronoport back, actually. Some units for progeneration to try to help out. I don't think he'll be able to do it in time, though. The north expansion is being very heavily assaulted, and this Chronoport will probably be completely aborted by the time that red time wave comes in. And if not, it's still going to be a lot of damage. Chitin is trying to get this from the future. It looks like, actually... Were they Chronoport from the past? You know what, I think they... Yeah, they were Chronoport from the past, weren't they? They must have been Chronoport up, because they had the Chronoport delay, but they couldn't have been from the future. So, because there's very little future to be had. Shalka, however, is still dealing a lot of damage, and is going to be able to just, like I said, wipe this out. He's 
send his mechs in. He managed to get the Chrono Energy to send mechs as a cleanup force, but really, he's completely cleaned up already. He doesn't really have much he can lose at this point. Dark Vortex does have the units coming in, however. Very clever little Chrono Port forward, but I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work because... Like I said, there's a huge army from Shalka. Shalka didn't even have half his army when he attacked the main base in the first place, and that completely obliterated it. So I seriously doubt Dark Vortex will have much of a chance right now. But let's see anyway. So from Dark Vortex's point of view, this is near the future as well, and I'm not sure if Blue Time Whip carries the death. It looks like it might, but as we saw before, that was a Chrono Port forward little triad. And no, the Chrono Port's actually... Oh no, it's probably cancelled. It actually is right there. Chrono Port's still valid. So that is going to be not very effective, as we see. Dodge is coming in, trying to deal with the can to the mechs. Dutch Buds were all destroyed if they were even there in the first place. And the Triad is coming in to try to go for one last stand. Jumping back a bit further, just to double check. Yeah, here we are. The Octopod's coming in, not dealing a whole lot of damage. However, very clever little trick he tried to pull off here, but unfortunately a little bit too late. He managed to get... He chronoported back a bunch of units to try to help out that he built in the future. So he chronoported to the future, then chronoported to the past. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save his own base. Very clever use of Grekin's free... Or Grekin's location independent chronoporting, but unfortunately not enough to destroy what he needs. Because the thing is, these forces, as you can see, the Chronoport in the future actually didn't happen. So these forces are unstable. They're going to be, once the next time wave comes along, past this point right here, they're going to be completely wiped out. Shalka, on the other hand, at about the same time, sees the units here, sees the units that they're Chronoported, but has managed to destroy them as well in the future. At least apparently has managed to destroy them. And his harassment, the harassment was coming in to the north base as well, that was very minor anyway, isn't going to be doing much. So unfortunately for Dark Vortex, that very very interesting last ditch attempt to win, to live, but unfortunately the red time have just passed it and made it completely moot. So Dark Vortex, or yeah, Dark Vortex really does not have a chance. He's GG'd, and that is pretty much the game. So yeah, Dark Vortex just double checking, see what he has, make sure he actually can't. There's nothing he can do, but he's already GG'd, so he probably realizes there's nothing he can do. He's just double checking, making absolutely sure, seeing what he did wrong, seeing what he could have done, jumping along the time wave. Trying to chronoport some last ditch units, but really it's not going to be enough. Shalka's army, Shalka's army is massive. He has at least two dozen mechs. He's got, he had half a dozen Mars, half a dozen Lancers, and probably more by the time he actually attacked. He didn't have half his army, like I said, in the, in the base. So, really, Dark Vortex does not have the production capacity to match this. So that was a very interesting game, very back and forth at the start, and very, very nice almost comeback strategy from Dark Vortex. Very interesting use of Grekin's ability to chronoport anywhere on the map and to chronoport anything without any cost other than Q Plasma. And he's still trying to go for it, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do much. He unfortunately chronoported his units back into the place that they died in. So, really, very interesting attempt, but ultimately not fruitful. Very, very, like I said, very cute, very interesting, very, very much something I'd like to see developed in the future, but. He as as it is, he has lost. So that was the game. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and have a good night.